Hi there, Magic players. Barry White here from MagicUntap.com and Magic Untap right here on YouTube. Joining me is Ryan Spain of Daybreak Games. Now, if you have been paying attention to the news recently, you may have seen that Daybreak has taken over Magic the Gathering online from Wizards of the Coast, and Ryan is here to tell us a bit about it. Ryan, thank you for joining us. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for having me. I'm doing really good. Uh getting geared up for for magic con this week and uh, the the frantic uh, pre-preparation has begun uh, but we're all we're looking forward to to that it should be a good weekend in las vegas now as i had just mentioned a moment ago daybreak has taken over magic the gathering online from wizards of the coast H how did the transition go was it smooth were there some bumps uh, tell me the story about that uh, well, the uh, the decision to make this move happened before I was involved, but it was an understandable one. The uh, Wizards wants to put their digital focus into building Arena, but recognizes that uh, the Magic Online is a, a game that has a lot to offer the Magic community, that, that uh, it fills a vital role in the ecosystem of digital play for the game and that uh, it, it wanted to give it a new steward that would make uh, Magic Online a better focus for, for, for their brand. And that worked out really well with the Daybreak agreement where Daybreak has effectively acquired the publishing rights and the development rights for Magic Online, uh, but Wizards is still connected to it, so they still have a vested interest in its uh, success as well. So uh, there's still support uh, from Wizards to, to help us make Magic Online the best it can be. Uh, but Daybreak gets to pick up a new toy and say, hey, what can we turn this into? How can we improve this? How can we extend the life of this incredible, venerable game? And uh, the transition had definitely had its bumps. It's really tough to uh, to take a piece of software a, a just such a light term for for what for what this is this feat of engineering out of the company and the network and the systems that are supporting it uh, as a digital entity under one company and putting it into another and uh, there were just it was just a lot of work and the, the kind of work that you don't know you have until you solve the one problem that reveals the next one you know it, it it's just a methodical got to do it do it do it until it all works and then you, you brush your hands off and say done and that happened uh late last year and we completed the handoff and uh daybreak has been uh, looking at ways to you know improve things uh, quickly um but also we're, we're looking down the road down the field as well uh but it's largely you know the same this is the, the the team that's been working on it forever uh is i mean it always changes the team is always adding people and uh, people move on to do other things but there's you know the the it's it's not like it was handed over to a completely brand new set of of individuals now uh writing the code and making the decisions uh it's more that uh it's under a new management new structure new uh, support network uh from uh, the kind of the daybreak hq and that's been going great uh we've been able to try a lot of things and and take some risks and uh ask our players questions through introducing new features uh new cues new ideas new and just gauging response and trying to be very transparent and uh, responsive to player response. And I think right now it's going great. Okay, so it sounds like Wizards of the Coast is giving Daybreak a certain level of autonomy with uh, what they're doing with Magic Online. Yeah, there are, of course, many details that are, you know, and specifics that are understood and agreed to, but uh, by and large, there is a trust. It's, it's almost like if we just act sensibly with the best interests of magic uh, and magic online in our minds and uh, when we make our decisions then it's that's that's the high high level agreement and uh, and, and we're and we're doing that you know we have a 
uh, a love of this game as well and are looking to uh, build on it uh, from the Daybreak side with the, the same love and respect that, uh, that one would uh, working for Wizards. Uh, that's uh there's all <laughs> yeah the you know what's always going on right now with magic online is uh, new cards being made there's a con you know the the, the pipeline uh of new magic cards is uh, fatter than ever and there's a lot of new content coming all the time part of our strength is our depth of, of card catalog so first and foremost uh, keeping up with formats uh, uh and keeping parity to the best week of our ability with with paper formats is uh, always front of mind. Uh, but we are doing the th like the initial things. Well, first we uh, launched uh, two-factor authentication. That was a, a nice early win uh, once things were on the daybreak side. Uh, and the the thing is, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done under the hood. That's not super visible or uh, exciting to the average user, but it's the type of, types of things that enable us to be able to build into the future data hooks and um, uh, and figuring out all those loose ends that are still exist in the in this new world. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you find, oh yeah, that was a thing that connected to this at Wizards and now connects to nothing. We gotta fix that, you know? So a lot of that going on. Um, but on the more exciting fronts, you know, uh, we've done uh, uh, we reintroduced uh, single elimination 64 player uh, tournaments. That's been a, a huge success from player response, both just in behavior, it, it, in participation behavior, but also, uh, you know, we listen to social media and people are talking about it and are very excited about those. So we're, we're looking to incorporate more of that uh, and to do more, uh, for, you know, that's like the event experiment experimentation that we can do pretty easily. I think one of the things that's important for us uh, to do in the short term, given that big changes take a long time, you know, how do we make impactful changes quickly? And you do that by looking at what you're good at doing quickly. And, and we can, it, we're good at changing prize structures and changing event structures. We have a good system in place to create those. So that's just a, a, a matter of imagination and a willingness to ask questions through change. Uh, and so we did that with, uh, we're doing that with events and we're doing that with uh, all access, you know, experimenting with what all access means uh, to, to Magic Online and the community because uh, card access is fundamental. This is a, this is a system in which you acquire digital cards in your, into your collection and use them to play in events. It's a, both of those have to be there and functioning and solid. And, and if there's supply and demand issues that make uh, the part A, you know, just having the, the cards to play with prevent part B, it's a, it's a disaster for everybody. Nobody's happy, literally nobody. Right. Uh, and so that's the uh, kind of front of mind issues that we're trying to solve kind of in the medium term, uh, looking looking towards ways to, to help people uh, get cards to play with without needing to collect them, but, and to never bury this lead, but to always make collecting matter on Magic Online. I think it's a, an important feature of the game that it has peer-to-peer uh, -peer object trading that that we can move our things around between our accounts with uh, it's just not something that most games have yeah i know that's a feature not on arena that a lot of players would like to see there well it's fraught with uh, difficulty and uh, you know challenges that make it less appealing for a new game to even want to do when there's a lot of models now that show you different ways that you can approach collection building to solve those problems. Uh, but, you know, we need to respond to the, the changing nature of uh, of these environments and in our, our ecosystems to make sure that that players can uh, can have the play experiences they're looking for uh, with low friction. There's just a lot of friction on on magic online in a lot of directions. And I guess if I had 
uh, you know, at the highest level, that's driving our decisions in the in the medium term in terms of what we're deciding to work on. How do we reduce those frictions? Primarily, like, so the, the onboarding experience is, I think, the most important friction to reduce. Uh, there's a lot of in-game frictions that people can name and they'd be right about, but it's also like these, this is the community that's already uh, learned to adapt to those frictions and make it work. At, and that's, it, it, it's not great could be better but where we're really losing people is the people trying us out and experiencing immediate friction that bounces them off of the game entirely that's uh so the the uh in priority for the kind of first development swings beyond like two-factor authentication that are larger are going to be around the onboarding experience and making sure that we're doing the best we can to uh, make first experience for Magic players welcoming and inviting on Magic Online so that they want to uh, come back and stay and play. Okay, so we've talked about the near future. We've talked about like the medium term. What about long term? What are some of the things that MTGO players can expect in the long term? Perhaps maybe a graphics overhaul so the game doesn't look so, I don't know, 2005? It's the easiest thing to ask for in terms of like it's obvious that this could use uh, a, a graphic update but what you're fundamentally talking about there is an, is an engine update uh, we wouldn't do just a it would be wrong i think to simply uh take it make a big effort to do a graphical overhaul under the current tech and so it's almost like if, if that kind of huge swing is a is a multi-year effort that comes when we prove ourselves in the more short term right like that you know what we get to do on that kind of scale depends largely on what we are able to accomplish in the the near and medium term and show that yeah that investment's going to pay off and so we're, we're getting our sea legs under us here at daybreak um I think things are headed in the right direction. Uh, you know, the, 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 again, there, there's, I should have a better list of just like all the little wins we have, like the, you can select favorite lands now, you know, the, um, uh, another thing, uh, a thing coming up that, uh, you know, is, uh, uh, better foil treatment, better premium, you know, the, the, right now, most people keep that off because it both does not look good and it's, uh, it hurts performance significantly. But we have uh, someone who using kind of a, a free week of like, what do you want to develop? What do you want to make better about this game? Uh, one of our younger, you know, newer programmers and more junior and experienced, like basically uh, rev revamped how we can approach uh, premium. And we're looking, I'm, I'm, there's no, I don't want to promise any dates, but it's actively being worked on. We're trying to figure out how to get that from proof of concept to yeah that looks great and is really performative to delivering it to players so those a lot of a lot of the sh those are the short-term wins we can hit while we take the look way downfield to like let's earn the right to bring you know to put in the investment to to do an engine overhaul that would be exciting but it, it for, for my brain it's almost premature it's like that that doesn't happen if we don't show that we have this potential this you know we need to improve the new player experience so that they, we increase our player base uh, so that we can attract a demographic like the commander player base that that could be playing with us that does not I and mean, how many commander players uh are newer to the game they gravitate immediately to commander they love it but they don't even really know about us you know they don't even know you know because people don't talk about as a, as a destination for commander and we want to become something that the commander community talks about as a digital destination for enjoying that experience and uh, all of that is building blocks towards you know that, that are achievable short-term medium-term uh, achievable goals that then prove the, the the worthiness of making a much larger investment in time and resources into a major overall. 
Now you've mentioned player base here and there a couple times. Uh, how are the numbers for MTGO right now? I can't get into specifics, but there's nothing scary. You know, the, like the the uh, we've stayed steady. There there was a uh, you know it's always a risk. You know when when you make that jump, and you're you're asking for uh, you know a reinstall or a, you know, uh, but we have the it's like the the players who have left for arena for for you know for because they prefer that experience what it's offering them for that um all of that's largely happened and we we are kind of steady with this core audience that we that the magic online offering really serves uh you know whether it is the commander players who want to play digitally with rules enforcement uh in a three plus player game with with their real you know transliteration of their paper decks in digital you know they are coming to us uh the uh, you know competitive eternal format players are magic online is is where you compete for that so it's for right now it's about identifying where we have uh committed experienced dedicated passionate players who are served by what we're offering and building on that um but it, it, it's uh i think we've seen a lot of positive or i should say we've learned a lot of great lessons around you know these these experiments around uh, a big big update to the vintage cube that was another ask a question by making a lot of change and demonstrate responsiveness by then responding to those to the feedback to the questions we asked with our decisions and uh uh you know that's why we're doing that uh kind of thing in the in the in the near term it's uh something we can react to and and affect change quickly on while we and use that to prove the the long-term goals and in expanding the player base uh daybreak games will be at magic Con las vegas which starts today september 22nd goes on through sunday the 24th showing off magic gathering online and but what what can mac players expect from daybreak and mtgo at magic Con? yeah uh, we're excited we're gonna have uh you know I, I mentioned improving the onboarding experience and one of the cornerstones of that is uh creating uh a straightforward experience for new to Magic Online players that also that, that showcases how we're different, showcases what we have to offer, but is also appealing to our existing players so that we don't have this cordoned off. There's the new player section and you play over there until ready and then you join the rest of us. I want new players to be at the table immediately, but that means an experience that works for a lot of player types. And we are uh, bringing back and juicing up the uh, uh, jump start variant we call Super Jump, which is now going to contain power. So we're putting uh, Moxin and Ancestral Recall and uh, into our uh, Super Jump decks, and, and it becomes a uh, pick two half decks format but one that immediately reminds you that you're playing with power, that you're here, you're here with cards all the way back to the beginning. And uh, the first pass at a revision of the existing decks is going to be available to play at, uh, at MagicCon. Uh, and uh, we're working toward, you know, right now it's still, it's, it's a bunch of decks and you uh, get a random assortment and you pick two and they mix them together. What we're going to do long term, though, for the onboarding experience is have more of a set A selection, pick pick from this set of first decks, half decks, and then based on what you pick, a random assortment of uh, synergistic second half decks, which is going to allow us to make the decks cohesive, vintage cube feeling decks right uh and th that's that's where we want to land that you kind of show up and are reminded in a quick jump start style experience that you're in vintage cube land uh and all of that and mean what all of that means for every demographic whether you're a drafter a commander player or an eternal format uh, constructed player the reminder that we go that we're vintage 
is a is a great place to uh, to start. So we're going to be debuting those changes um, at uh, at MagicCon, and there's still time to you know we're going to get feedback on those as well, and likely uh, make further changes to the decks based on uh, player feedback. There, uh, we're going to do account recovery uh, when there's a lot of people who maybe haven't played Magic Online in long enough that they've maybe forgotten exactly their password or their, you know, and we're going to have people, uh, you know, someone on site ready to help people uh, recover their accounts. Uh, and who knows, you might find lots of cool stuff on there you forgot about. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a survey to get uh, some additional thoughts on, you know, where our community wants us to be headed. And of course, uh, you know, free loot. I, I forget. <laughs> I, I'll, that's another thing I need to look up. Uh, is uh, is it was where we landed on uh, on what you get. Uh, but there's there's uh, no doubt going to be some cool free stuff for you if you stop by and and uh, take the survey or get your account uh, re re upped. Yeah, and who doesn't like free stuff, especially when it's related to Magic the Gathering? Now, Ryan, as we wrap up here, is there anything else you'd like to say about Daybreak Games taking over Magic the Gathering Online and anything else about the just the software itself? I am just excited about the future right now for the for this game. Uh, I think we are uh, doing some good things immediately that, that players are noticing and appreciating, and, and we appreciate that appreciation. And uh, I, I believe that... You know, Daybreak just wants us to succeed and is asking us how to help. They're not uh, telling us what to do and how to do it. They're saying, here's what we offer and how, and how we can help, uh, help help us help us help you do your magic, you know, and that's a great feeling uh, to, to have from them and a feeling that uh, that it's just about defining where we want to get to and uh, and and doing the things we need to do to get there and that we have support from uh from above to to do that and that we have this incredible team uh the the people working on this game and getting these cards coded and uh, and keeping the, the the train running and the the bolts tightened it's an incredible crew of dedicated people that uh, that are in some cases again very new and making contributions right away uh like the the premium card uh, uh thanks cody and or uh you know the the uh the masters of card implementation where you you look one way and turn around and suddenly uh ryan has produced 40 cards behind your back you know the the there's there's a lot of uh, uh, unseen heroes that uh, that keep this venerable, amazing accomplishment rolling, and I appreciate them. Uh, and uh, I just want to thank the team for all their great hard work, and uh, thank Daybreak for uh, giving us the chance to define the future for ourselves and uh, and and move ahead in the directions we think are correct. And so far, uh, people are are appreciating that and we're going to keep asking questions through uh, new options and, and new features so keep a look out well all right ryan sounds like there's a lot in store for magic the gathering online i know i'm excited to see what's going to happen here in the next year or two and i'm sure magic the gathering online players are just as excited to see what will uh, be the next big thing for MTGO. So Ryan, thank you very much for joining us and thank you for joining us and watching this interview as we chatted uh, about Magic the Gathering online. For Magic Untapped, I am Barry White. <laughs> <laughs>